prepared. So I'm going to be talking you through some of that today. And uh, we also have Michelle Hardy joining as well. So Michelle is the Spark Connect Manager. Uh, and she'll be joining as well to talk you through the market. So what I do is I actually curate the conference program side of things. So that's all the sessions, speakers and panelists. And Michelle looks after the Ready Steady Pitch, Brand Tables and Markets, which we'll get to shortly. But first of all, um, just so if you have any questions, there is a chat box and we'll get to them throughout the session towards the end. If you do have any questions, I will be referencing the website um, and you'll see a link pop up in the website. I won't be sharing my screen, but if you'd like to follow along as we speak, and then you can um, guide yourself through the website as well. Um, and um, I will begin by just talking through the conference structure um, and then uh, moving on to, to various points that I'm sure will come up along the way. So look, Screen Forever is Australia's largest film and TV industry conference and market. It's back again this year at the Star Event Centre on the Gold Coast. It's on the Tuesday the 19th to the 21st to Thursday the 21st of March, followed by the online Global Marketplace, which takes place virtually the following week, the 26th and 27th of March. We'll get to that a little bit later in the webinar today. So Screen Forever is where the Australian film and TV industry comes together um, buy, to buy and sell projects, to find creative partners, to hear the latest intel on current issues affecting the screen industry overall, and of course, to network and party, um, big part of it. Um, so for first times in particular, there's a lot going on and it can be quite chaotic. Even if you've been before, even if it's not your first time, it can be quite chaotic and it can be overwhelming as well. But if you do your research, you work out a plan for how you will make the most of your time on the ground, you can get some real value out of the experience and this can only benefit your career in the screen industry overall. So first things first is to register for the conference if you haven't already. So there should be a link now there in the chat box, screenforever.org.au. You can register through the link there. Um, we have all information about travel and accommodation also available on there. We have a special deal for accommodation, which you can have a look through. Um, and the ticketing prices also up there, there are member and non-member prices to get the full, full three-day experience. And that includes all of your social events as well. So that includes SPA awards, you know, opening night, all of that is included in your full pass. Um, and if you're a SPA member, you do get that discount as well. So once you get to the Star Event Centre on day one, um, which is the 19th of March, the registration desk is open from 10 a.m. Really suggest you get there early because registration can be quite packed. It can be a little bit chaotic. The line can be out the door. So if you get there at 10 a.m., that is great. So then you can get in, get your pass, get a coffee, get settled, get navigated, and it won't be quite as full on and you won't have to line up for miles around the block. So get an early, get your conference pass and your welcome pack. Registrations won't close during the conference. So you can book right up until opening day. Um, and it's best, it is best to book online, however, though. So once you get to conference, we do have something new starting this year. For the first time we have, uh, it's called Launchpad, which begins at 11 a.m. So what I might do now is just throw to Michelle so she can tell us a little bit about Launchpad and how it actually works on the day. Thank you, Jess. Um, yes, yeah, so Launchpad, as Jess said, is a new initiative. We haven't run it before, but um, we think it's going to be really valuable, particularly for people who haven't attended Screen Forever yet, or even if it's your second go around the block. Um, for emerging early career producers or just anybody who really wants to get their head around exactly what's going to be happening over the next three days. Because obviously, even though there's a certain format for Screen Forever, we have uh, different things happening each year. So um, kicks off at 11. Uh, it's in the event centre marquee, which is where all the Spark Connect activities will happen, um, which is right next to the main event centre, uh, literally a 30 second walk. Um, so come on into the marquee and there'll be a Spa Connect uh, check-in desk. Head up to the desk and um, we'll direct you to your seat. Um, you can register online. You can see on the Spa Connect um, web pages, there's a, a registration button. Um, so please do register. 
There's two sections to the launch pad. The first hour will be uh, the wonderful Monica Davidson, who will be talking you through um, tips and tricks, how to make the most of the next three days and nights, um, things that she's learned uh, from going to the conference and the market a number of times, and just some little anecdotes and maybe some interactivity uh, with you guys and, um, you know, just the things to keep or to remind you to keep at the forefront of your mind to make the absolute best of the experience. So that's the first hour. And then the second hour for the first 50 delegates who arrive at the marquee at 11 o'clock on the Tuesday, uh, those delegates will have the opportunity to participate in a speed networking event with our service and facility members. So if you're looking for uh, a lawyer, an accountant, a post-production house, uh, um, financing from somebody like Fulcrum Media Finance, come along, get there right on 11, come up to the check-in desk and you'll be given a card, which means you'll have access to that next stage of Launchpad. Um, the speed networking will run for about half an hour per block and there'll be two blocks. If you're uh, waiting for the second block, we've got another area where you can stay and chat to uh, the other delegates and get to know people or catch up with people that you've um, met, uh, that you, you, you know, but you need to kind of reconnect with. Um, so use that time just to kind of talk to people about what they're up to the next three days. Um, and then it'll wrap up at one, which is perfect timing to then head back into the main event center and uh, start the official program, which launches at 1.30. Thanks, Mish. Um, so yes, yeah, so after Launchpad, um, we have the main program, which, which gets started. So I'm just gonna talk through how I would kind of um, navigate Screen Forever if I was going as a delegate. So what I would do is I would go to Launchpad, go get some lunch, get back in at 1.30 for the for the opening ceremony. Um, and then, which it goes till 2.30. Uh, and then we have our flagship day one ABC Q&A panel, which is we are yet to announce exactly what the topic is of that because um, just like it's it's pretty exciting. Right? It's pretty exciting. It's always quite, um, it can be quite heated. It can be spicy. It's very agenda setting. It's um, really looking at big picture themes um, with some exciting guests um, and hosts on the stage as well. Um, so it's always great to get there for that Q&A on day one as well, because that, a lot of the themes in it feed through the rest of the program. So after Q&A, we, uh, then we have a little break, a little afternoon tea, and then we have our Hector Crawford Memorial Lecture. Um, and that is, which is again, very special guest yet to be announced, stay tuned. Um, and then we have an in conversation with the new uh, CEO of Screen Australia, who's uh, Deirdre Brennan. So we're delighted to have her appearing on day one as well. So the reason I'm walking you through all of that, because there is nothing else happening on day one. So it's like, there is nothing else you do, but go and attend this fabulous, like, um, flagship day event um, on that day. So, and then you can go straight out from uh, hearing it uh, from Deirdre Brennan, New Screen Australia CEO. You can walk straight out onto the lawn and have a few drinks um, at the opening night party. And um, and uh, that's actually down by the pool lawn, I'm sorry. And there'll be a map available as well in the um, uh, on the website as well. Um, so that's your day one. So get there, get ready. Um, and then because day two, that's when we get really, that's when we start to get really busy. So what I would say with day two is, and day three at this stage, is really have a look at the program. Like look at what's happening because there is a lot going on. There are like four rooms with sessions full of speakers. The intel you're going to get is uh, insane. You will learn so much. Every session is specifically curated so that, you, so that you come away with some real knowledge, some real insight, not just on the, uh, about the domestic uh, industry, but also about the global industry and how it affects our um, the way we make um, film and television content as well. So look, every single session has real value in it. So that's why I suggest really having a, a look through the program to see which sessions you want to go to, who you want to hear from, which space are you working in? Are you working in the factual space? Look at the factual sessions. Nothing will clash. All factual sessions will be at different times. So if that is your area, you can go to all of them. So really work your way through that because you'll want to set your schedule um, 
around that and around the market and around your meeting. So that's why we say it does take some planning. So if you want to go to a certain session, try not to book your meetings at that time. We're not live streaming any of the sessions this year as we you know, have the past couple of years. We're, we are live streaming day one, the flagship day one, all those sessions will be live streamed, but days two and three are not, which is why you need to be there in person in the room. Um, so on day two, on the Tuesday, the structure is there are four rooms happening at any given time. Have a look to see what's happening at each time and to um, coordinate that with your market activity as well, as well as your meetings around it. Um, and, um, you know, and there's, there's a lot going on in the program. Look, I have to say, look, one of my favourite things about Screen Forever is that it's really different to other conferences. It's different to other film festivals. It is different to, um, you know, it's different to all other conferences and film festivals because it's really about having those really open, honest, focused discussions. Um, it's where people can get really open about what is going on in the industry. Um, and it's where, you know, various established um, uh, established industry executives from Australia and globally, they come and they talk about their um their opinions and their their insider knowledge of, of what is happening so i think that's really the point of difference you won't hear at any other australian conference what you would hear at screen forever so um having said all that i would take a, a look at day two um at the program and then maybe i'll hand back to mish and mish can tell you what's going on in the market on day two so across the Spark Connect market, across day two and three, uh, so the Wednesday and Thursday, there are a number of different strands. There's four, actually. Um, so I'll go through, first of all, just what's happening on day two. Um, we have uh, the Ready Steady Pitch meetings, so and we have the Marketplace Roundtables running uh, that day. Uh, Ready Steady Pitch is in the morning. So you can get the um, scary stuff out of the way and then the marketplace roundtables in the afternoon. It's not really scary. I didn't say that. It's fun and exciting, a little bit scary. Um, so the Ready Steady Pitch is basically an opportunity to pitch one project to a buyer and the buyers are TV commissioners or uh, ANZ distributors for feature film across uh, all genres. So we've got scripted TV, unscripted TV, feature film, documentary, factual, kids, animation, et cetera. Um, so the first and biggest tip I'd give you, which kind of carries on from what Jess was saying about planning and preparation for the conference, is for the market, really know who you want to meet with and who is the best fit for your project. Um, we have had situations in the past where somebody might rock up to a ready, steady pitch meeting and start pitching their brilliant massive drama series and the buyer will be like, that's great, but I only commission kids or I only commission factual. And it's embarrassing and it's a waste of their time. It's a waste of your time. And you really only get one shot at these things and people remember. So really, really do your research. Make sure that if you've got a factual show, you know who is commissioning factual. Now, of course you can do this via the old fashioned Google or LinkedIn. Um, look at the SBS website, look at the ABC website. For example, they have exactly what they're looking for on the website. But to make it easier for you, uh, you will see that on the website, there's a section for, there's individual sections for each of these strands that I'm talking about. So if you go to, for example, Ready Steady Pitch, uh, you will see on that page a list of hosts and you can search for their name or their company or you can just have a look through. Um, sometimes there's a hint in the title because it might say head of scripted or head of unscripted. But if you're not sure, just have a look. Put a lot of time aside to um, research them all, read their bios, know where they've come from, know their role within the company. But you'll see on the right hand side underneath their profile photo is a ready, steady pitch brief. And it makes very clear at the top, you'll see in capital letters, unscripted or scripted or kids or animation. And then underneath that, they will let you know exactly what they're looking for and sometimes more importantly what they're not looking for so it's really important not to go oh look they say they're not looking for that but once they hear my idea they're going to commission it it's probably not worth it to be honest you're better off really being sure that your project meets their brief um and then you know once you decide that they could be right do do some extra research as i said look at news articles 
look at um, If Magazine, look at um, Screen Hub, Deadline, Variety, all of the industry magazines where you might find that, you know, three months ago they were given a promotion so you can start your meeting with, oh, by the way, congratulations, congratulations on your promotion. That's amazing. So make it a little bit personal. But the format of the meetings are basically five minutes to pitch and then five minutes for you to receive feedback from the buyer. And it's pretty fast. So um, again, get to the marquee early, 15 minutes early, even 20. Um, just so you're calm, cool and collected. You're not rushing about. Uh, come along to the spa checking desk and have your name ticked off. You'll receive, again, a card. We love these coloured cards at Screen Forever. Um, so if you get a red card, you'll know that you're in round one and a green card might be round two. So because it's so fast, we just want to make it really easy. And rather than going, if you're in the 10.15 to 10.25 slot, we just say, if you've got a green card in your hand, come on through. And we actually get everybody into the official Spa Connect area uh, 10 minutes before. So if you're pitching at 10, you will actually be ready to go inside the, the Spa Connect area at uh, 10 minutes to. And so that'll just give you time to chill out, um, you know, practice your, your pitch, get yourself sorted, um, get a bit of a lay of the land because it's always nice to know the sounds and, you know, how buzzy it is and, and what have you. Uh, and then you'll be called, um, the, there will be bells ringing and you'll be called to move forward and um, meet with your buyer. And there's also table numbers. So it's really, there's a, there'll be a map up on the screen so you know where your table is. So you've just got that extra 10 minutes to go, right, that's exactly where I'm heading. As soon as the bell rings, I'll jump up. Also really importantly, when your time is up, please do move on because imagine if you were the next person uh, ready to step into that seat and somebody sat there for an extra two or three minutes or you know chat, chatting to the buyer, well, that's cutting into the next person's time. So please do be respectful for everybody else who's coming up for the next meeting. And just in terms of the marquee to give you an idea of the layout. And again, if you get there a little bit early, as Jess said, you can check all this stuff out and, and really get a, a sense of where everything is. But it's pretty straightforward. When you come into the marquee, there's our business lounge, which is a great place, by the way, to do informal meetings outside of Spa Connect. Just let them know you'll meet them in the business lounge. It's really comfy couches and cushions, and it's just a really nice environment. Um, at the Once you walk past the uh, business lounge area, that's where we will be with the spa check-in desk. There'll be about four or five people um, that you can talk to, ask questions. They'll be all volunteers as well as myself, my coordinator, Kelly McNamara, and also another spa um, staff member called Yolanda Frankie. So there's a lot of people to ask questions. Do get there early. And then once you're all checked in, you can take a seat in the business lounge. And then on the other side of what we call the green wall, so you'll see a lot of um, very Queenslandy palms and, and trees in the middle of the room. On the other side of that is what is called the official Spa Connect area. So you'll only ever enter that area at the time that you have a meeting booked. So it might just be for your Ready Steady Pitch or your Marketplace Roundtable um, or any other meetings that will happen on Thursday. So that's basically the Ready Steady Pitch. Um, they will happen in the morning. And then in the afternoon, there is something that we call marketplace roundtables. Again, it's almost all the same buyers that you have the opportunity to meet at the Ready Steady Pitch. And they will basically be sat at like a big banquet round, like a big dining table. Um, and there'll be nine of you and one nine delegates and one host. <clears throat> and they will introduce themselves tell you a little bit about the company, their role in the company, and then it's basically open slather for questions. So this is really important, again, that you do your research. So if you're meeting with the head of script at ABC, or sorry, you're sitting at a round table with, have some pre-planned questions. Um, you know, Bay of Fires was a great success. Season two has just been recommissioned. Are you looking for something like that or are you looking for something different? Um, you know, what are, what are the, the three types of shows that you're not looking for? Just try and gather intel because marketplace intel is so important for when it comes time to pitching and just knowing what the buyers want because we all want our next show green lit and and to do that you need to be pitching them the things that they want so the more you can learn about what they want uh the closer you'll get to that green light so it's incredibly invaluable so please do come in with questions i have one request and that is the marketplace roundtables are a strictly non-pitching zone so please do not say so i've got this project i think it'd be great for abc because of course you've got a it's confidential and b you've got other delegates there that 
your questions pertaining to your individual project might not be relevant too. So we don't want to waste their time. They ask questions that you think you could all benefit from. Um, and they run for 25 minutes. And then again, a bell will ring and you will move out. And then the next round table will come in. Um, that is Wednesday. But just before we go on to Thursday, Jess, mm. if you don't mind, um, there are basically in total six different types of meetings that you can book across Spark Connect. But we have um, allocated a cap of two meetings per delegate per strand. So that means you can book two Ready Steady Pitch meetings, two Marketplace Roundtables, two Production Partnership Forum meetings, and two Publishers Pitch of Market Forum meetings, and the same in the online global, global market, which we'll talk about later. But uh, that's why it's also really important to know exactly who you want to meet with. So when booking is open, you've already done all your research. You can just jump on and book the people that you want and also have a backup. Maybe have two or even three people that are your backup. So if you don't get your first two meetings um, that you ideally want, you can, you'll have another, you won't have to quickly scramble to find out who else is coming. You'll know. And then, of course, if you don't get Spark Connect meetings that you want, you can always book your own one-on-one -on -one meetings um, as I said, meet them in the delegate uh, in the business lounge or outside on the picnic tables and um, reach out uh, to the people. You can see on the website there's a who's attending page. So you can see everybody who's coming, everyone who's yeah. registered. Coming. Might just jump in, Mish. Um, yeah, I was going to say that there is the full delegate list is available on the website, but we've also put the Spark Connect landing page link which Brad Taylor behind the scenes, our Fab Membership Spanish behind the scenes is popping links in there in the chat group. Um, and then we also have a couple of questions coming in, Mish. So when do the registrations actually open for the pitch sessions? Well, I will. Uh, I was going to go through all the different... That's a bit ones. later. Okay, I'm jumping ahead. At the end, <laughs> yes. Okay. Just so everybody can get a real picture of all the different types of meetings they can book before I go into that nitty gritty. Okay, so we've got the ready, steady pitch and we've got the marketplace roundtables on the Wednesday. That's right. What happens on the Thursday? So Thursday, look, I'll, I'll, I'll just jump in. So Thursday we do have more sessions yes. starting again on the Thursday. I will give you some, I'd love to give you all of the sessions highlights, but that'll just take me forever to go through like which are my favourite. They're all my favourite sessions. Have a look, have a look. Um, but Thursday we get into a, a new iteration of the market as well. Is it the, the PPM? Yes, yes, yes. We have acronyms as well as Lots of acronyms. Are, yeah. But, uh, so the PPM stands for the Publishers Pitch and Market. Now we have done this not last year, but the year before. And I have to say, every delegate that attended raved about it and said, please, please, can we do it again? Um, so we are doing it again this year, backed by popular demand. And it is essentially um, publishers, authors, and agents who represent and have film and TV rights available for their IP, being novels, books, um, will come in and they will pitch one book. It might be a book that is, uh, you know, came out last year, but still have film and TV rights available, or it might be a pre-release manuscript, which is really exciting. Basically, you can have it, you can have a read of this book in advance of it even hitting the shelves. And if you really like it, you will have the opportunity to potentially bid on the rights for that book before anybody else has seen it incredible so, yeah mm. it's really exciting and there's some great um there's some great novels in there so we kind of turn the tables a little bit you can sit back and relax for an hour so this is 9 15 on thursday morning and during that hour the publishers will be on stage and they'll be pitching to you so for a change you won't be pitching um and you'll listen to what they have to say about the novel in terms of the story why they think it's great for adaptation and then we have a panel of producers moderated by Donna Andrews, people like Jason Stevens from Lingo, Lingo who are masters of, at, mm. you know, um, creating adaptations of books into hugely successful series. Um, so they will be there to grill the publishers and the agents and the authors on why this works, how they see it adapting, what they think the audience is. Um, so there'll be a little bit of interaction on stage. So each publisher, author or agent will have the opportunity to be on stage for about five or so minutes. And then, um, and then the next one will pop up. After all the pictures are complete, there will be an opportunity for you to meet one-on-one -on -one with the publisher's author or agents. And it could be to talk about that specific book, 
or even if that specific specific book is say a kids book and you're not that keen but you've read their catalogue which we are publishing on which is published already I should say on the uh, publisher's picture market page so once you're registered and logged in this is behind the you can only see this once you're registered um, but you go to the profile of that particular publisher say Walker Books and on the page underneath their profile photo you'll be able to click click to a PDF of the one page pitch so the book that they're going to pitch and also their film and TV rights catalogue and that ha could have you know five to thirty um, books available and you can request manuscripts to be either emailed through. Sometimes I still ask for the old-fashioned book because I like the actual tactile reading of the book. Um, so, you know, it's a great way to get some reading in. Um, but uh, you can meet with them. But that is uh, that will be booked officially through the Spark Connect bookings, which I'll talk to you about how to do that later. Now, again, if you don't get an official Spark Connect uh, meeting, which is a 10-minute meeting, Feel free to grab their business card or find their email address online um, in advance of the conference. And again, set up a one-to-one -one meeting. The publishers will be there almost all day Thursday. So do have a look at who you want to meet with again in advance, which novel you're interested in or novels. And then if you don't get a Spark Connect uh, meeting when it opens this afternoon, do feel free to reach out. They'll be more than happy to meet with you. Um, they are in the business of selling, not buying. So, of course, if you're interested in something they have to sell, you should have no problem getting a meeting. Um, and I should say with the Spark Connect meetings, it, look, it's a bit of a luxury that we set all of this up for our delegates, give the opportunity to, um, you know, book in these roundtables and one-on-one -on -one meetings without having to reach out directly. So... Not a lot of other markets do that. We just, it's something we've always done and it's something we like to give back to our delegates. So it's um, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a kind of luxury. So if you, as I said, if you don't get all the meetings you want or you get six out of the 12, that's absolutely fine. You can still reach out. Um, as Jess said, you can see he's coming from the delegate list. So, and I highly recommend outside of your 12 Spark Connect meetings, do try and set up meetings. Have a look at the program, see which, conferences which conferences which sessions you really want to go to and then try and book some one-on-one -on -one meetings around that especially from people that you don't normally have access to so if you live in Adelaide like I do don't book don't book meetings with people from Adelaide book meetings with people from Melbourne or Sydney that's great we've just got a couple of questions coming in just one which uh, yeah yeah we definitely should address is Andrew is asking, how common do you believe Hi Hello app QR code digital business card is used amongst attendees? I just wanted to say that um, um, business, card, business cards are still used. I did not think they were, but I went to a market last year. Everybody had a business card and that is the old fashioned card or business card. I gave out so many and I was given so many. Um, people did have the QR code as well, though. So I would say definitely have something, whether it's a business card, whether it's a QR code, you just want some really quick easy way to exchange your information with someone. So I would say yes. Um, question about um, the publisher's pitch as well. I've adapted a book into a screenplay. Can I pitch that script to producers at the publisher's pitch? Say that again. What's I've adapted a book into a screenplay. Can I pitch that script that she's adapted from the book? Two producers at the publisher's pitch. No, you would use no. the opportunity to pitch that screenplay as part of Ready Steady Pitch. Ready Steady Pitch. One, one meetings that you book, because even though it's adapted from a book, it's still a, a, a project that you want to pitch as a screen project. So that would be done through the Ready Steady Pitch. Yeah, so, so I think Jessica, we're talking about the other way. So we're, we hear from the publishers here pitching their books. We're yeah. not um, producers pitching screenplays. So that's, yeah, ready, steady, pitch. Um, and we, we have a lot of pitching questions coming in. I don't know if you want to address any of these. Make sure you just want to keep going for now. Let's do the rest of Thursday, which is the... Yeah, let's keep going. Okay. Yeah. So, of course, you may feel that you're not quite ready for the ready, steady, pitch in that you have a project, but you're a smaller producer, you're an independent producer, you don't potentially possibly have credits or enough runs on the board that you think that Stan is going to immediately say, yes, we love it, let's do it. You might feel that you want to connect with a bigger production company. 
and partner with them and have them work with you to develop the project and then take it out to the marketplace, which is, you know, what a lot of us do in the first instance. And uh, in order to facilitate those meetings, we have set up something called the Production Partnerships Forum. And there is, I believe, 20, oh, maybe even 30 production companies across factual and scripted that are attending or hosting, I should say, production partnership forum meetings. Each of them will run eight 15 minute meetings and you have the opportunity when the Spark Connect bookings open to um, book in with them a 15 minute meeting. Now that might not be one project. It might be that you want to introduce your company and let them know that you have a slate of projects and you would love in the future to potentially talk to them about partnering. You might want uh, some experience as an associate producer in a bigger company. So you could pitch yourself as a producer um, or a creator or a writer. Um, but if you do have one project, that's fine as well. You can just go in with the sole purpose of pitching that one project. Um, but it's more informal than the ready, steady pitch. It is 15 minutes. It doesn't have a set format. So it's a little bit more casual. Um, and, you know, you can also use it to gather intel from producers who are actively producing, you know, TV shows and films in the market at the moment. So very valuable um, meetings if you are keen to meet with some potential production partners. So that's Thursday, <clears throat> and that's really the end of Spa Connect. So I have now gone through all of the Spa Connect strands. Mm -hmm. So is it worth um, having a quick chat about how to book? I think so. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. So the product uh, publishers pitch and market opens this afternoon for bookings. So if you're not registered and you are now very excited and keen to come to Spring Forever, which I hope you are, um, please jump online and register uh, straight away because you can't obviously book Spark Connect meetings until you are registered. So uh, you will get an email from Screen Forever, 30 seconds, almost the exact time that the bookings open. So what we've done this year is we're opening them in three different uh, blocks because it can be quite overwhelming. So what we've done, we're opening the publisher's pitch and market this afternoon and then on Tuesday, the 20th, so this coming Tuesday, we're opening the Spark Connect market. So Spark Connect are the in-person, on-the-ground meetings that we just talked about, which take place on the 20th and 21st of March. And then the following Tuesday, which is the 27th of February, we will open the online global market. We haven't talked about that yet, but we will in a second. Um, so you will get three separate emails at the time that the bookings for each of those blocks open. And as soon as you're registered, you'll automatically go on the list to receive these emails. Do make sure that they're not going to your spam. Um, so the email will basically have a live link to the bookings. It will just say, book here. Click that link and you'll be prompted to sign in if you haven't already signed in. Um, so do have your login details handy. Um, this will be the email and the password that you initially registered with. And then on the booking page, you will see quite a long list of every available meeting. There's a lot. Um, so again, this is why it's best for you to know exactly who you want to meet with so that you don't have to sift through that long list. There is a search bar at the top. Um, so the fastest way to find a meeting is simply to control F and search for the host's name, if you know it, Julie Eckersley, or um, SBS. Now you should know the name, so I would just put in the first or even the last name and then it should take you straight to that um, person's available meetings. Um, you can also, there's some filters that you can use at the top of the page. So select the meetings that you want by simply ticking, there's a tick box, you just tick the meetings that you want uh, next to the names and then click save meetings. Now, obviously there's a maximum of two. So to save time, don't tick more than two because otherwise you'll get an error message. Um, I have to go back to the beginning. So book the two that you want, hit save meetings at the very bottom of the page. So you will need to scroll down to the bottom to hit save meetings and that's it. 
And then at the top of back at the top of the page, you'll see a large green confirmation confirmation message saying that your meetings have been successful and they've been added to your agenda. To check, you can go to your My Agenda and all your meetings will be listed in there. So I just um just to have one question in here, Mish, um, from Lisa. If we're not interested in one of the sections to pitch, i.e. publishers, pitch and market, are we able to use those two pitches for other sections? No, it's not 12 in total. It's um two across each individual strand. So uh, so that's how they're allocated. Um, mm -hmm. On the 5th of March, so after we've given everybody a really fair chance of booking their meetings, any meetings that are left will open up and all the caps will be lifted. So do note that in your calendar as well. Well, we'll send you an email about it, but do note the 5th of March, uh, yeah, 5th of March, um, jump back on and all the meetings that are left will be there. So you can book as many as you want after that. Okay, so I think there's a, there's a few key dates in here. So I think there's today, Publishers Pitch Market opens. You need to be registered for the conference in order to book meetings in the PPM, Publishers Pitch Market. What and time today is that 3 open? 3pm. 3pm. And standard time. So standard as the time, yes. runs out of Queensland, mm. do note that all the times uh, are Australian Eastern Standard Time, which is what you'll be on when you're up there. Yeah, so, Queensland uh, time. But, yeah. Um, but just do note that it's a AEST. And then, so that's today. Then we have the 20th next week midday midday and that's for your ready steady pitch in your marketplace roundtables and your production partnerships forum great and then there was a third date do you remember the 27th again at midday so i'm just going to let you know quickly what the online global market is if that's okay Jess. great yeah okay. So the online global market basically was born out of COVID, probably one of the only positive things that came out of COVID that I'm aware of. Um, we uh, were forced to run our entire screen forever. I think it might have been, gosh, 35 or 36, um, quite a few years ago now, on online. And it was very successful. And because we had the opportunity to do it online that year, I reached out to, I think it was like 50 um, buyers from across the globe. There's a lot. And yeah, and of course, we'll never get 50 to come down. It's just, you know, the trip is so far and it's very expensive, blah, blah, blah. So we had more uh, international buyers than ever before involved, but it was virtual. So, of course, when we back to, went back to being able to be in person uh, on the ground on the Gold Coast, um, we kind of thought, well, why don't we keep running the online global market with the internationals? internationals? It makes complete sense. So now we have a whole separate section of the market, which occurs on the Tuesday and the Wednesday, the following week, which is the 26th and the 27th of March. That gives you the chance to get back home, recover a little bit, think about what you've learned from the market and the conference, and then, you know, you may want to adapt your pitches for the global market based on that. Um, also, uh, as well as giving a little break in between, it works with the time zone because, of course, of course, America is like 17 hours behind, so we can't do it on the Mondays. It'll be there Sunday. So it's good there's a, a little break in between of four days for you to regroup. Now, it's exactly the same. There's two strands. It's the global Ready, Steady, Pitch meetings, and it's the global Marketplace Roundtable. So if you imagine everything I've talked about um, is identical in terms of your preparation, um, how it runs. The only difference is it's via Zoom, so virtual. And uh, we do allow 15 minutes instead of 10 for the Ready Steady Pitches online, purely because, you know, everybody, no matter how prepared they are, can have technical issues. We've had, you know, a, a snowstorm in Toronto that delayed the host or, you know. So we just allow that little bit of extra time in case the hosts have any um difficulties or you know maybe you're a couple of minutes late just so that you still get that full 10 minutes with them uh, in a perfect world um so what else is there to say about the online global market and also the marketplace roundtables are the same except you're on a virtual zoom um up to 15 uh 12 to 15 people normally attend um and it's a good opportunity to ask the same sort of questions gather marketplace intel do your research. So in the right now, your focus is probably researching Spark Connect, figuring out who you want to meet with locally, 
and then uh, after that on one global market because you've got another week to do that research. Also, there are some internationals coming down to Australia. I think there's about 12 or 13. So there will also be the opportunity, those internationals, even though they're global, we've included in the local Spark Connect meetings on the Gold Coast. So you may get the chance to meet with some international distributors. Um, there's Fifth Season, Red Arrow Studios, Simon Crow Films, um, who's an English distributor of feature films, Phil Hunt, who is all over everything film-wise across the globe. He's based in the UK. Yeah. So there's some really good people to, um, some internationals to meet on the ground, but also um, in the online global market the following week. That's great. And look, Brad has just gone and put all of those dates into the chat box there. So maybe just cut and paste, screenshot, whatever you need to do to make sure you've got those in your calendar there. Um, we have... Before we invite our special guests in, there is one other question in here. Uh, as a writer, is it worth booking meetings with publishers to pitch manuscripts to them or would that be out of place? So as a writer of a novel, an unpublished novel, wanting to pitch to a publisher at the PPM, probably not at the PPM, would you say, not at the publisher's pitch market, but maybe they can make an outside meeting with one of the publishers during the conference? You know... Yes, if they get a look, go. I'd say go for it. Let's go for go it. This for is the place you've got them. Yeah, yeah. But it, probably yeah. So sorry to answer your question, Francesca. Probably not at the publisher's pitch market, but if they're there, find out who they are. You can always do your networking piece with them, and we'll get into some networking tips shortly when we invite our special guests in. Guests in, yes. and also at Launchpad, which we mentioned earlier, there'll be some networking and tips how to approach the people that you want to meet and talk to, and how to make the most of that short amount of time with them. Um, is there anything else, Mish? I just want to add one more thing um, mm. while I remember. I'll drop back in later if there's anything I've forgotten or feel free to keep asking questions. We'll probably have some time at the end. But yeah, just to note that all, as I mentioned, all the session, sessions, meeting and events are listed in Queensland time on the website and you can adjust the um, time zone on the website to your local time zone. So what's really important is when you you must have it set obviously to Queensland time when you're in Queensland or you'll be an hour late or whatever to all your meetings um, but when you get back home wherever that may be um, to do your online global meetings make sure you change it back to your local time zone because otherwise the times that will be popping up in your schedule will be Queensland times so that's really really important thank you Okay, so now, look, we will go back to some further questions a little bit later. I did just want to quickly go through that there are also a lot of social events during the conference as well. Um, so I mentioned earlier you've got your opening night drinks, um, which take place on the Tuesday evening, the Audio Network opening night drinks on the pool lawn. These are all on the um, program as well on our website. On the uh, Tuesday evening, we have our Gold Coast Film Commission Sunset Social which takes place on the garden events lawn. Um, and also, yes, uh, I missed this one. Go back to Wednesday the 20th in the morning. We have our Screen Rights Speed Networking Hour. So that's a great opportunity to get in and do some networking. Um, on the second day, the Wednesday morning, you do need to register for that one, and that is uh, in the garden events lawn. And... Um, then we also have on the Thursday evening, the last night of the conference, is our awards night. So that's when everyone uh, get dolled up, uh, let your hair down, have a party. Um, but also we celebrate the industry. We celebrate producers. We celebrate some of our great Australian productions uh, members um, and, and uh, the content that we have coming out um, and coming to conference. So that's our social events. What I would like to do now is invite um, one of our most valued, we have a representative, one of our most valued partners, big supporter of the conference uh, and the industry as a whole. As a whole. I'd like to invite Robbie Miles um, into the mix here. So um, Robbie Miles from Afters. Hi, Robbie. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Hi, Justin. Um, 
Welcome. And I'd also like to invite Avon Yap. So Avon Yap is a former one to watch. Um, he's now a bit of a bit of a pro at Screen Forever, I think. He's like done it all. He's like been on the stage, he's been behind the scenes, he's he's done it all. So what I might do is just throw over to Robbie and Avon to just give us a little bit of thoughts on their experience of a of a conference like Screen Forever. Terrific. Thanks so much, Jess. And uh, Avon and I have had a little little chat in advance, um, and I think he's absolutely the master of this space. So I'll just uh, prompt, hopefully, some very useful rants from Avon. Um, and nice to see you again. Um, you too. So to, to kick off, you know, the I suppose for this particular conference, what will you be doing at this iteration of Screen Forever? Uh, thanks for having me, by the way, Jess. Um, so this year, I'm producing and moderating a panel called The Uncharted Waters of Feature Films, uh, which I'll plug it now. It's on Wednesday, the 20th of March at 11.30. Um, we've got reps from Roadshow, Kismet Movies, Umbrella, and the prolific Chinese-Australian filmmaker Pauline Chan will be on the panel with me. It's one of the only feature film panels um, which are happening in the program, so do try to get to that one. But what am I what am I doing this year, Robbie? It's um it's I think it's a shade different to the to last year's conference where I was a once to watch. Um, last year I feel like it was important for me to get as many meetings as I could, and it was really quite a debut moment for me as a once to watch and at Screen Forever. So, um, and my projects at the time were really needing marketplace feedback to you know decide my next steps. But this year, um, I have projects, but they're more in scripting stages or really not ready to show to the marketplace yet. So my meetings are more to um, update people, update buyers, catch up with them. Um, it's going to be some intel gathering, doing some introductions and meet and greets. Um, I'm soft pitching mainly, more introducing myself and my projects, looking for new creatives to collaborate with and find some new IP. Um, 2023 was a pretty tumultuous year for a lot of people. And a lot of people have left companies and started new roles. So it's also their first screen forever in their new roles. So I'm just keen to catch up with them in their, um, in their with the new titles. And yeah, generally, I think I'm, I might have a bit more free time this year. So I'd love to go to some sessions and you know, absorb information and, and some new perspectives. Wonderful. Well, I think from the breadth and depth of, you know, not only your experience last time, but this time you're probably covering almost all the use cases for people who are going to be coming to screen forever. Uh, and thank you so much, Jess and Michelle, for that, such a comprehensive review of everything that's happening. Um, and I'm sure for all of you viewers, uh, you can see just how overwhelming this can be to navigate. Um, so I wanted to pick up on on one thing you just mentioned there, Evan. Um, when you say soft pitching, um, you know, what does that mean to you in this particular environment? Soft pitching to me is, it's sort of like introducing a friend that you'd like to introduce to someone else. You know, it's like, oh, he, like he's a nice guy and um, he's this tall and uh, just some of the little shiny bits of information that you like to um, mention about a project that you have in development, but you don't, you know, dive into the whole story and um, try and really examine whether or not there's a collaboration opportunity with that particular buyer. Um, it's more just to give a flavor of what sort of stories you're interested in and what might be coming up in the pipeline for them. And well, sometimes buyers have um, heard a soft pitch that I've given and they've gone, that sounds really interesting. Do you have anything available? And I'll say, not yet. We have a pitch. I always say that I have a pitch deck because it's very easy to whip up on Canva or whatever nowadays. Um, but I'll, I'll always say that, yeah, we've got a pitch ready and I'm happy to share something, but uh, we don't have a script yet. So we'll send you something when it's ready. It's important, I think, for attendees to realize that if it's not ready to show to people, don't show it because you only really get the one opportunity to make a first impression and the buyers, um, not, well, not just the buyers, even developers. I mean, I work at Hoodlum as a developer and I get pitches all the time. You get one opportunity to show your work. And if it's a pass, they probably won't entertain reading that project again, unless it, you know, you attach some really shiny flair of the month director or you've got cast attached to it. The circumstances in which to get something looked at a second time um, are very, very 
specific. So do make sure that if you're not ready to show something, don't show it. And I think right on that, when you have that opportunity to revisit something, you know, that might come about from the very rare confluence of circumstances where someone who loved the project and championed it and was interested in it, but it wasn't right for the company or the broadcaster they're at at the time has now moved into a new role. And that's why, you know, this conference is so great to reconnect with those people who might have a new email address, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, so on that point, I think it really is about um, forming relationships that will transcend any one project. You know, in any of these meetings, if you can make someone like you and be interested, even if you show them a project that's not quite right for them, um, they'll be willing to look at the next thing that you send if you've been thoughtful, respectful, and also low pressure. So that, that soft pitching thing, I think, is is important for you personally and for a project. If you're in a line for a drink or a coffee somewhere, no one wants to get your elevator pitch sort of rammed into their ears because the goal isn't get your business card in their pocket, it's form a relationship. Mm. Yeah, there are these unwritten rules of engagement. Um, a lot of behaviors that are out of pocket. It's my new favorite <laughs> turn of phrase. <laughs> just to, yeah, I think you just have to remember it's a business event. Um, please don't pitch in the bathroom. It's happened to me before. Uh, just please, please respect personal boundaries. You know, keep your hands to yourself. Just it sounds like really basic stuff, but it it can be. You know, the, these are pretty rowdy. Can be a bit of a rowdy market, <laughs> especially when you get to the parties at the end of the night. Um, but yeah, just I totally agree with you, Robbie. It's not there's a time and place for for pitching. Yeah. And I also think, you know, how you do one thing is how you do everything. You know, if you've, if you've shown up on time or early, you know, early on is on time, on time is late. Uh, and you've clearly done your research and you know, the person you're speaking to, that's going to stand you in such good stead for having an ongoing relationship rather than that horrifying example before of someone pitching a great feature drama to a documentary commissioner for example. Mm. Um, so in preparing for a meeting, you know, what are some of the, the practical steps you do? If you know, okay, I'm, I'm meeting X person from Paramount, you know, what would you do in preparing for that meeting? Uh, good question. Preparation. I feel like I knew how to prepare for these sorts of events, but if I feel I, the industry is shifting so dynamically. It's like, what does preparation even mean nowadays? Like you may be speaking to one executive now but then they end up moving to a different company in a, in a couple of months time um, but research is important I don't want to discourage anyone from preparation uh, most people will have some kind of social footprint or online footprint so it's good to you know do a little do a little bit of professional stalking on their LinkedIn and get to know what they've done in the past um, get to know what are the recent titles those platforms have released recently try and find or articulate through lines that they might have or similarities that they might have. Um, and if you don't know them, you may choose to go into the meetings and say, I'm here to use this meeting to find out what you're looking for. That's yep. a totally fine thing to use the time for. If you really don't know or don't think that your projects are the right fit for that company, there's nothing wrong with saying, I'd like to use the 10 minutes we have just to hear about what you're looking for and what are the pillars of commissioning you're looking for this year. I think that's excellent advice. And for anyone out there, if you're not sure what to say, ask a question. Mm. Um, because the with any project that you're pitching, you might even have something that's, I hesitate to use the word sacrificial, but a project that is something you know is good, that you want to talk about, that might not be ready for them. But that can be your sort of canary in the coal mine for what else they're interested in. Because I've gone into plenty of pitches before where I've pitched something that they aren't interested in, but it's a great way into the conversation of what they are interested in. Um, and again, that means that you want them to always, if they're rejecting your project, it should be on the basis of taste, not quality. So everything that you're putting forward, they should say, oh, this is clearly high quality, well thought out work. Um, it's just not for us. Uh, so, you know, given the you know, experience of having been pitched to in the bathroom, et cetera, um, are there any uh, really strong do's for you, um, you know, other than doing your research, um, especially in terms of managing the day and your energy levels and, you know, how to take a break, because although many of the people here are producers and writers and, you know, have various levels of extroversion or introversion, um, you know, maintaining your energy and your mental health throughout the day is really important. Yeah. They, these are really big days. Um, I think 
we were so you, you sort of look at the start time of the first event and you look at the end time of the after party it's you're you're there from like nine in the morning until 10 p.m 11 p.m each day and even though it doesn't feel like work sometimes because it's exciting to be meeting new friends and you're chit-chatting it's just you're on your feet most of the day you're hung most of the time you're hungry or you're sort of scavenging for food when the buffet tables have lunch for maybe an hour or two um it can get really overwhelming um some do's um i always recommend asking for lukewarm water at the bar never ask for iced water if you drink iced water it'll ice out your throat and your vocal cords and you'll be hoarse and croaky by day two so always ask for lukewarm water if you can warm water is even better um always bring you know honey i have a chinese cough syrup called peipako which is terrific for um for soothing the vocal folds at the end of a long day of um yelling and <laughs> it feels like you're yelling actually and if you need to take a break, you need it's totally fine to just you know say thank you for the conversation. I'd like to um go to the bathroom now or <laughs> I'm gonna go get some lunch. Totally fine to try and um, prioritize yourself and make sure you're feeling okay. Yeah, and and reading the room in that, you know, this is classic, I suppose, LA meeting etiquette. They talk about quite a bit of as soon as you get that, well, thanks for coming in, or even just the beginning of the word well don't try and keep pitching or follow up after that, you know, mm. read what someone's giving. And if you, you know, in going into one of those meetings, you said that I'd like to use this 10 minutes to find this, um, you know, you might find it's actually a wonderful way to bond with someone to say, look, I know we've got this 10 minutes booked, but you know, I've been really hoarse, you know, from talking all day mm. and on what you're on about, or even just, you know, avoiding small talk where possible, but just saying, let's let's take the pressure down for a minute you know there's so much intensity and speed going on like how's your favorite sports team doing or mm -hmm. you know it's something that especially if you've done your research if they've tweeted about it or put a linkedin post about something you know asking them about something that is adjacent to their job can be a really great way to make a human connection with someone and and find a bit of um space in the day that you're not feeling like you're on transmit all the time mm. and that's such a big do it's like trying to find a way to talk about something that isn't your project and make yourself memorable mine has always been i was a championship winning classical pianist before i became a filmmaker and that always raises eyebrows and you sort of start a conversation about oh what was that like and um you know i i do still play the piano now and and then people start sharing about their music experiences. It's just a way to keep yourself memorable. It's it's a human connection. Something you said on the panel that uh, you did with me last year, Robbie, or was it this year? Time flies. Um, was it takes three years to convert a new relationship into a working one, roughly three years. Um, and so if it's going to take three years, you might as well take the pressure off and keep it light and easy to begin with and try to get to know a person it's a lot like dating in many ways um because yeah making movies making tv shows it's a marriage you're going to be with those these people for years if it if you if it all goes to plan you know yeah and and the, you know it never gets better than the first date they say you know the <laughs> people while they're trying to impress you and and be really present so it is it is that looking to take that longer view of okay if you know, in the best case scenario, this person loves your project and wants to work on it with you, you're going to be spending a lot of time in rooms or in Zoom rooms with that person um, mm. and being the kind of person that you can do that with or feel comfortable in doing so um, goes a long way. Yeah. Something I'd love to recommend um, just after going to Screen Forever last year, bring earplugs. Um, the after parties are really loud. It's like there's, I think they deliberately blast it so that people don't pitch at you. <laughs> <laughs> at the after parties yes, can it, you is, can it is deafening, it is deafening <laughs> so I, I was lucky i brought earplugs to um uh to screen forever last year just because i, I can be a bit sensitive to to loud noises but oh man they were lifesavers um especially mm. in those um after parties so that's one thing that i can recommend business cards um i disagree with um, some of the recommendations about having physical business cards. I personally think they're dead. Um, the last time I used a business card was at Hot Docs Toronto um, in 2022. You give them to me. <laughs> so just try and, um, yeah, I'd rather, please email 
uh, materials after the meetings don't leave behind things it's just it's just too tricky especially when people are traveling from interstate and overseas and um it's just like why do i want to hang on to a 30 page pitch deck lookbook when you could just email it to me and when you do email it make sure you compress the file so that it's not eating up too much of their storage i mean it's just small things to make make it as frictionless as a process for them um when you're when you're making new relationships and the only other thing that I, I would touch upon as well is I had um, a former student here because I've been teaching at Afters for the last uh, four and a half years and just recently become head of industry and alumni here. And I had a, a student come to me uh, who's neurodivergent uh, who said, I'm really uncomfortable in social situations and you know, here are my specific intersectionalities. You know, how does that work for me in, in a very high pressure, difficult pitching environment or a networking environment? And I said, well, depending on your level of comfort, um, in self-disclosing, just saying to someone, hey, you know, this is my lived experience and this environment's a bit difficult for me. Mm. Uh, anyone who doesn't, you know, react well to that or isn't helpful in helping you navigate that is probably someone you don't want to work with anyway. Mm. Uh, so it's kind of a good filter. Um, in, in, you know, depending on your level of comfort, disclosing, you know, whatever diversity you have um, that may not be immediately visible. Mm. Uh, so I think, you know, knowing that as an industry, I think we are quite... Uh, we're certainly growing in our levels of empathy um, mm -hmm. and accessibility. And I think that's a really important thing to keep in mind for the conference and when you're meeting people for the first time. Yeah, that's so, that's such a good point. When I am I usually find social situations pretty confronting generally, um, especially when there are strangers involved. One line that has been an amazing get out of jail card for me in these big networking events is, hey, can I crash this conversation? lifesaver because they'll tell you if they can and well most of the time they'll say yes um, and if they're in a discussion that's quite serious they'll sort of hesitate and you can just go oh you're in a, you're in a conversation all good I'll, I'll talk to someone else um but 90 percent of the time at a networking function people are there to network so there's nothing wrong with going up and saying hi my name's Aben. can i crash this conversation well your whatever your name is don't say Aben. <laughs> Or even, hi, Evan, uh, nice to meet you. I don't know anyone here. Can I talk to you for a minute? Yeah, that's great. It's perfect. It's, I mean, honesty is, um, I find people respond to authenticity and honesty really strongly. And they're probably thinking the same thing as you. If you, I, I've gone into pitch meetings and gone, I'm really like full from all the bread and carbohydrates that were on the lunch table. And they'll go, oh my God, me too. <laughs> Certainly. Um, how are we doing for time, Jess? Is there any questions? Yeah, yeah. I, I was just going to say as well, look, I, um, just um, just in reference to a couple of the comments you've made there. Um, one thing that we do have available during conference as well is our quiet room. So it's a room. So I know sometimes, it, yeah, you can get really like oversensitive to like the sound and the noise and, you know, the chaos and things like that as well. So there is like a quiet room available all day across the conference where you can just go on and take some time out, just have a bit of quiet as well. We also have an access coordinator this year, Steph Dower. Um, so if any access requirements, she will be there to, to guide you along the way as well. Um, and so, which is, which is really great. So, you know, I really liked what you were saying about how I think we're getting more sensitive as an industry overall to, to things like that. So, um, yeah, look, we do have a couple of questions. I think, Avon, um, there is one very specific question for you, Avon, which is, does everyone have WeChat or Hi Hello apps? Would you know the answer to that one? No idea. Um, I find just asking for emails is the easiest. Great. Um, and I just, I guess quickly one question, how quickly would you respond or would you, if, if you had a great meeting and someone wanted further, further materials or how, how quickly would you follow up after a meeting or how would you follow up? Follow up is important because um, I've, when I was starting out going to conferences and marketplace events, I would have these wonderful conversations with buyers but then as soon as I flew back home and life got in the way, I just let all of these warm leads go ice cold because I didn't follow up or I didn't follow up fast enough. So we, we you do need to strike when the iron is hot, but not when it's too hot. So I wouldn't send materials on the same day when you're all still at the conference. 
because that's just going to be lost under, hey, can we push our meeting to this location? Hey, can we push the meeting to another day? Or can we do this on Zoom instead? Or can we do a phone call instead? So you don't want to get lost in that um, conference mix up of emails, but I would wait until everyone's had time to fly back to their home cities, get their feedback under the desk, um, and no longer than a week after, I reckon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, completely yeah, agree. Great. If it's if it wasn't worth following up within a week, um, it's probably not worth following up. Totally. And I um last year was helpful because I had accountability buddies to do follow up with me. So I booked in a event in my calendar, which is like, okay, you and I are both going to screen forever together. We've got these meetings. Let's catch up like the Monday after in the next week, just to talk about what our meetings were, what the action items were. I always go into meetings and have a physical notebook with just action items. And I just list them down one by one of what things I need to send or things I have to follow up with. And I talk through them with my accountability buddy and we go, okay, by this date, we're going to send emails. To, we're going to do these action items. So just having, you know, accountability structures in place so that you actually do what you said you do. Amazing. Well, look, thank you both so much for your time today. I look forward to seeing you both on the ground at Screen Forever. Um, just going to invite Michelle back into the room so we can wrap up now just answer any final questions as I know time is ticking away um yeah so any any fine I've got so there is one question here about an unusual question from Masood how hot does it get in the venue just thinking should I wear a formal suit dress is very important would you say so Michelle yes definitely I think <clears throat> comfort is key but you also want to feel confident and professional um, I actually think the bigger risk is being cold in a conference centre and I hate being mm. cold. So I would definitely bring a jacket of some sort. Uh, comfy shoes are really important too. The last thing you want to be doing is, you know, feeling your feet ache while you're trying to do your best pitch or, you know, be limited at how fast you can get to the next meeting if you're running a little bit behind. So comfort is really important. Um, and if you're staying close to the venue, um, I always say it's nice to go home after the official program ends before the nighttime events to have a bit of a refresh, maybe a change of clothes, maybe dull off a little bit if you like that. Um, so yes, that would be my best advice. <laughs> yeah, thanks. And look, I do think like, as I even said as well, I think it is really important to pace yourself. Don't go in like, I'm going to do everything and meet everyone and go to everything because you will burn out really, really quickly. I know from experience it has happened. So it is really important to pace yourself, get targeted, do your research, figure out exactly what you want to get out of it. Stay comfortable, comfortable shoes, not being stylish at the same time, but also being authentically yourself. Um, more questions coming in. We're getting close to wrapping up now. Um the app, there will be an app. Um, oh, my thumbs up on screen. There will be an app which is launched a um, few days before conference. If you register for the event, you will receive emails and updates that come through. So you will be notified when the app does come out. Walking time from the Dorset, I would suggest going into Google Maps. You can Google the amount of time it takes between venues. Um, book some, an emerging writer. Sorry, I'm just just having a quick look at what the questions are here. I can see that question there, Jess. Yeah. I think, um, as an emerging writer, I mean, you will probably ultimately need a producer to partner with in order to pitch to the marketplace, which is the buyers who will be present at Ready City Pitch taking pictures. So my recommendation to you is actually not to book in for the Ready Steady Pitch, but rather the production partnerships forum, because that's where you can meet with other, or not other producers, but producers who are always, trust me, as a producer, I'm always looking for new writers and new projects and, you know, the next exciting new voice. So I think it would be much more valuable to book in with um, some producers as part of that forum rather than a ready steady pitch of course you can but i do feel like it would be more valuable for you to get your producer on first okay great um i think that's kind of everything i think we have covered pretty much everything um i literally don't have anything left in my notes 
So look, everyone, please get registered. The um, 3 p.m. today, um, we have Publishers Future Market opening and look forward to seeing you all there. Anything you want to end with there, Mish? There is a, uh email which is connect. Um, Brad, maybe you could pop this in if you're still there. Connect at screenproducers.org.au. Um, if you have any questions, please shoot them through to that email address and we'll come back to you as quickly as we can. Thank you, Mish. And look, this um, webinar will be up on the Facebook website shortly after we finish. Um, get registered. See you all there, everyone. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.